So I am going to start uh, by uh, welcoming Khaled to uh, Get Published Cohort. Khaled, I consider Khaled as my mentor. Uh, Khaled is uh, an expert in his field, social media um, and uh, digital marketing. He's probably one of the best people you would uh, uh, like really need to know when it comes to digital media globally, not only regionally, but globally. He, know, he knows, um, you know, the latest trends. He has, as I said, al almost half a million followers. And half a million followers? What <laughs> half, half, a million, half a million. Combine, <laughs> if, if you combine all your channels. No, no, I don't, I don't. Okay. I only have 60,000 on LinkedIn, that's it. So, uh, so Khaled, Agreed. I'm so grateful and uh, humbled that uh, Khaled uh, agreed to talk to us today and share, uh, you know, some of uh, his expertise with us. And uh, the way we do it is, is Khaled gonna uh, pre present, then we'll open it up for discussion. I asked Khaled to talk about how to find prospects on LinkedIn. So Khaled is is really an expert when it comes to LinkedIn and. Uh, this discussion is um, part of my online course that I teach for writers and freelance writers. And LinkedIn is a, is a great place uh, to find um, uh, editors and uh, publishers and, and business managers and marketing managers that you want to pitch to, that you want to, to reach out to so that you can publish your articles. So uh, Khaled taught me a lot of stuff on how to do that. And I attended a number of his sessions and I learned a lot from, from them. So I wanted to share uh, some of Khaled's experience with you. So we are so lucky to have him. So enough about me, I talked a lot. And so now I'm gonna open it up for Khaled. And Khaled, the floor is all yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Natasha. Uh... I would like to recommend for my people uh, who are joining from LinkedIn uh, to follow Natasha on LinkedIn, number one. Natasha, she's a good copywriter and she's a, a, a blogger. Uh, I, uh, I was fortunate enough to work with her on a few projects in the past. Plus, she's having a cohort on how to pitch yourself as a writer uh, on uh, Maven platform. So uh, maybe Natasha would put... Uh, a form or, or, or the link to her cohort. If anyone wants to know more about it, I advise you to really join. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about LinkedIn. Uh, it's gonna be in English, so bear with us. And, and we're gonna have a lot of questions. So it's gonna be an engaging uh, session. Uh, it will be around one hour maybe. At the end also, we're gonna be open for questions, but anyone who has a question during you can ask your questions in the chat section. And let's start. There is, okay. So before we start, I have a question for you. So this is this is me, my name is Khaled Ahmad. I used to be a digital media director at the government of Jordan back in the days. And then I founded the social media department at the Zane Jordan Telecom uh, and I, uh, uh, I trained around over 10,000 uh, marketing uh, experts and consulted with over 250 firms. I can be found online at the username Shusmo, S-H-U-S-M-O. This is an Arabic word, which means what you call it in English. And so this is my username online. My first slide is a question. So how old is LinkedIn? Please answer in the chat. Just give me a number. Is it 10 years old, 15 years old? How old is LinkedIn? I'm gonna give you a minute, then we'll continue. Let me see the chat. Just guess, you don't have to Google it. <laughs> All right, we have the first answer from Natasha. 20 <laughs> years. 10, 15. Okay, one more and I'll tell you the answer. Okay, so LinkedIn is the oldest social media platform. LinkedIn is older than Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Snapchat and TikTok and all. LinkedIn idea came about in 2002, 
and officially launched in 2003. So LinkedIn is 20 years old and it's older than Facebook. Okay, moving on. And here it is. LinkedIn began uh, in a co-founder, Read Living Room in 2002, officially launched in 2003. We have around, if we go back here, it gives us a, a better uh, statistics, around 830 million members on LinkedIn in 20 countries. So LinkedIn considered uh, the most updated database around. So if you have a database of emails, uh, if the email expires, there's no, I mean, it's, it's hard to be updated. But if with LinkedIn, each time somebody has a new job or uh, change career or something like this, they always update their profile. So it is considered the most updated database around. Okay, so before we start, what, we, what are we doing now? In the past, we have an assumption that upload your CV or resume on LinkedIn and companies will call you for a job or a job interview. This is not the case anymore. So now you have to have, you have to do three things. Number one, you have to optimize your profile. So your profile has to be optimized. Why? Because once it's optimized, it will rank higher in the results when anyone is searching for keywords relevant to your uh, skills and interest. Number two, anyone visiting your profile will have a much better first impression. First impression is really important when they visit the profile uh, and that will give you better opportunities than before. Okay, so there is the upper section. This is the, I call this the upper section, which is the first impression, the digital first impression on LinkedIn. When you comment on someone's post or when you follow someone, when they are looking at the list of the new followers, they see three things, your photo, your name, and your headline. So those, when somebody sees them, they decide, should we go and visit their profile or not? So by default, LinkedIn puts in the last job title as your headline. So this is by default. So when I'm looking at the new followers, when I see someone worked on their headline and it is more than just a job title, I am intrigued to go and visit their profile and check their information. So that's why we need to work on optimizing our profile first. And this is what we're gonna be talking about the first few slides. So the first thing we need to have a good name, which is, this is basic, uh, just the name, your name, first name and last name, no email, uh, no fake name, no, today I was speaking with someone and they were using a company name, no company name, use your real name. So this is one, okay. And now when you, uh, have your creator mode on, there are more features uh, given to you, to your profile. One of them is you can record a short voice note uh, to tell people how to pronounce your name. So you can utilize this to give an introduction about who you are. You can start with your greetings, hello, introduce yourself, experience, unique value proposition, Hello, how are you doing? My name is Khaled Al Ahmad. I'm a digital growth expert. Uh, I can help uh, startup founders create digital growth within a short period of time. So once you exercise and work on that, it will be easy to say it or to write it. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna have some exercise in just a minute. We have another question. What is the most followed company on LinkedIn? What is the most followed company on, on LinkedIn? <laughs> nope, good guess, but no. Anyone? Uh, that's a good guess. Microsoft, a good guess. Disney, a good guess. 
This is all a good guess, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna give you, nope, it's not Facebook. One minute, then I'm gonna answer. But these are really good guesses. A very good guess. Apple, Google, we're close. Tesla, huh? Ali, we're very close. Yeah, we're almost there. Ah, yes. Uh, around these companies. Nope, not Starlink, not Microsoft. Okay, you give up? Amazon, yes. Amazon is the largest company on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. So Shack Shack wins. I posted about this. I posted the top most followed companies on LinkedIn yesterday, actually. Hmm. So now let's talk about the photo. The photo is really essential to the point I have an agreement with a photographer studio, really famous here in Jordan, that I talk to him, explain to him what the photo that I need them to do. And I send people to them. They have a special price. Their price is like 50 JD, but for the people I send them, it's 20 JD. So it has to be a headshot, not a body shot, a headshot. This is one. Two, the, whatever they're wearing has to match the work culture they're working with or they're about to work with. So if they're a banker, it has to be a suit. If they're a startup, smart casual. Okay, and avoid distracting background. And now the most important thing has to have a huge smile. It's not a smile like this. No, you have to show teeth. You, you have to radiate emotions of trust, success, leadership. So when someone looks at you, they're happy. They feel happy to connect with you. These are really simple details, but they're really important because they will help you when you send a connection request to decision makers. Okay, done with the photos. You can use one tool, photo analyzer, and they have an AI that can grade your photo and they will tell you the score of your photo. They will tell you if this is a good zoom, a good background, a good smile, Joe, they will measure all that and they will give you a score for your photo. Headline, this is very important. Really pay attention for this section. The headline, like we said, it only default your job title and this is not enough. So why is it important? Because you will rank higher when people search for your skills and uh, and you can also promote your skills and experience and projects. So how does it work? This is a template. I am, and your job title, plus I enjoy helping who, oh, I'm sorry, this is not the headline. This is the unique value proposition because it is part of the headline. So first we need to know what is the value proposition. So this is my job title. I enjoy helping who to do what, how. So I need to know, I need to tell people what's my job title, who am I helping uh, to do what, and how am I helping them? Here's an example. So I'm a digital growth consultant who enjoys helping startup founders achieve digital growth in less than six months by designing effective sales funnels, okay? So I help a niche, a certain target audience, reach or transform to this by doing this. Okay? This is important. Now the headline. So we, we, I showed you how to do the unique value proposition. Now we use your job title, which is the last job title that you have, plus few keywords relevant to what you do so the keywords i usually do an exercise but i didn't do it here but the keywords how you do it you search for your job title on linkedin then you go to jobs and you collect 20 not less 20 job description okay so when i say i'm looking for a digital marketing director 
I pick the USA because there's a lot of variety. Then I pick 20 digital marketing director job descriptions. I put them all in one document, Word document. Then I go to this free tool. It's called a Word Cloud. And I put the 20 description in the Word Cloud and it's going to give me keywords. Then I take these keywords. Uh, please mute your phones. Yeah, go ahead. I was speaking. I, I say 15 minutes and I'm, I was muted. No. No, no, no. So, no. Yeah. so this is how you find your keywords. There, there are more than one way. The, the, the long way, which I told you, you collect 20 job descriptions. You go to a word cloud tool. You put them there and it's going to give you keywords. This is one. The second one, you go to your profile on LinkedIn from a computer, not from your mobile. And then you say under your photo, more. I'm going to show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. I will do it here. Let me show you how we're going to do it. So you come here. Then you go to your profile. Then you go to more. Then you go to build resume. And you have two options, upload resume or create from profile. So you go create from profile and you put the job title. So digital marketing director, and you pick the option, you go to apply. Now the free version of LinkedIn will give you around 10 skills. So it tells you right here, you have those already in your profile and we recommend that you use these as well. If you have a paid premium LinkedIn subscription, it will give you around 20, okay? So this is the shorter way of finding keywords around your skills. All right. Okay, okay, let me see. Okay, so this is a given. This is which I showed you a couple of exercises to do it. And this is, we spoke about it in the previous slide. So job title, social media senior manager, keywords, growth marketer, uh, value proposition, helping startup grow online in the first year. So it's really important to work on your headline because this is one of the most important part sections in your profile and now i'm going to give you three minutes to work on your linkedin headline number one your job title which is a given number two keywords just pick a couple of keywords relevant to your skills number three your value proposition who are you helping to do what how and i'm going to show you the value proposition slide Yalla, in the chat i only need to see two of you let me see the first two who are gonna finish before anyone else three minutes let's see who's here ahlan ahlan welcome mervat ali hind isabella Muad, Noor, Lura, Shakshak, Firas, Mahmoud, Hassan, Ashraf, Ali, Ahmed, Abdullah, Natasha, and me. All right. Yalla, who finished? Anyone, anyone? Job title, couple of keywords or one, and then your value proposition. I help who to do what, how. Here's an example. I help digital growth. What is this? Okay. Ahmed, Mahmoud, could you uh, mute, please? 
Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Mervet. I can't, uh, okay, let's see. I'm gonna click on Mervet and see her headline. Trainer, coach, educational consultant, doctoral candidate, children's rights research, e-learning. All right, good. Okay, so trainer is good, coach, educational consultant. Those are mostly keywords, which is okay. That's fine. Okay, Shak Shak, project manager, communication, outreach media. I help youth produce audio by training and mentorship sessions. It's really good. Shak Shak is really good. Ali, I am a tech company CEO and I enjoy helping enterprises increase their efficiency using artificial intelligence. Okay, Ali, this, this is good, but this is good as a value proposition, but we need that also to add at the beginning uh, the job title, then the keywords. And why do we need to start with the job title and the keywords? Mute, mute. Mute, please. Ahmed, Ahmed, mute, no, Okay, thank you. Ali, why I'm saying this? Because people uh, see your headline from computer and from mobile, and the bigger percentage is from your mobile. So if we start with a longer sentence, it's going to be uh, truncated. So it has to be keywords at the beginning, so it has a bit better chance. Okay. I'm a digital marketing manager. I enjoy helping startup companies to build their brand with technical ads and creative content. Good. Assalamu alaikum, Ahlan Amjad. I am a content creator. I help the owner to build their social media profile professionally by preparing content plan and creating. Okay. Okay, okay. Good, good. Isabella. Good freelance writer helping you and your organization tell your story online. Very good. If we need just to add maybe a, a keyword, one or two. Great. Let's move on. Thank you very much. So we're done with this exercise. You got did, you guys did good. And you're, you're on the first step to have a really good headline. A lot of people don't do this, which is uh, customize their URL on LinkedIn. It is important to have it customized and have a username that matches all your other social networks. So my advice, and it can be first name and last name. If it's taking, you can flip it, uh, or the first letter of the first name, then the last name, or use your middle initial. So you have all these options. and. Uh, if you did not uh, edit your URL yet, I advise you to go ahead and do it. Mervet, I saw that you did not customize your username. So if you go to your profile, let me, let me show you. So we go to our profile, view profile. This is the page of our profile. Here on the right, edit public profile and URL from your computer, you click on it. And then right here is the pin. You click on the pin and you customize your username. All right. We're done with this one. Moving on. The about section, which is really important. Okay, Hind, great. Hind has hers customized. Mervet Amjad Mumtaz, guys are going to be on it. The about section, it's like a gold mine because uh, it's really SEO friendly and you can really showcase uh, what you do uh, from your experience and your achievements. So there are, you, there is no one template for all. Each person uh, has different uh, superpowers that they, that they can showcase. Uh, this is a uh, a template to start with as a job title i'm responsible for overseeing this and that and that 
particularly involved with this and that as my primary goal is to. I bring over a number of years of experience to my role, including experience with this and that and that. As a result of this background, my approach is very. So this is one template for that. So this is the template as a digital media director. I'm responsible for overseeing social media, digital marketing, and advertisement, um, particularly involved with marketing and advertising as my primary goal is to bring in more sales through digital channels. Of I bring over 15 years of experience to my role, including experience with the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. As a result of this background, I'm approach, uh, my approach is very aware of the type of business at hand, and I bring high level of maturity to the work. Outside of Zane Jordan, I am self-proclaimed chess master who likes to play chess with my kids, and I try my hardest to win every time, but it doesn't always work for me. So this is one, let me see another one. So this is here, another one. I always like to start with the fact and statistics. Let me tell you why. When you go to anybody's profile, has, uh, I'm gonna go to anyone's profile. So I click here and I'm gonna go to Bulat. So Bulat here, when I scroll to his account and I see his about section, you see, see more. So there's not much things here. Let me see, Cat, what's her name? Yes, so if we go to Cat, Cat about section, she's a really good writer. So she has, uh, like a shocking uh, stat or a fact. The number one reason why websites fail, it is not about having a fancy design. Check this if you are an agency owner, consultant or educator who wants to make use of your website in growing your audience and revenue. So here she utilized the, the first four lines. You only get the first four lines before the see more, so they call this the hook. So you need to have people with the hook to pay attention. Oh, okay, so now she has this statement and now this is the context. I'm intrigued to know more about what she's talking about. And then I click on see more. Why your visitors don't sign up, book a call or download your lead, ma uh, your lead magnet. Imagine this, you, you, so she has really, a way of writing here about section of uh, showcasing the pain of her clients and why people don't do that and how her service is helping who and she wrote down uh, her niche and her target audience and how she's helping them with the uh, with the website copyright so whatever experience, power you have, we can use that. So facts, statistics, demonstrating the pain of the client, then we can talk about your story, then call to action, specialties. This is what I did with this one. So this one here is a recruitment company that I work, a guy, he's the owner of a recruitment company. So uh, I try to showcase the pain of his clients that did you know that 70% of global workforce is made up of passive talent who aren't searching for a job and the remaining 30% are active job seekers so now this is what's showing one two three four these are what's showing before see more this is where we can be of service then you will see see more you click see more and you will see my story how to contact me, and these are my specialties. So this is another template of how to do the about. There are always different ways according to your client. Okay. You can do another one, my story, job function, project certifications, publications, CTA, call to action. So this one here, my story, then my job function, the projects, certifications, publications, contact me. So you see, number one, uh, there are so many sections 
that are available. So there are about maybe 20 sections, my stories, specialties, my pain, my customer's target audience, my projects, my certification. And then you pick and choose according to the client or according to your story. And then they have to look pretty. See the, the, the emojis I'm using, the bullet points and stuff. So you have to make it look pretty, not like a newspaper text all the way. Okay, so enough with the about section. I have a question for you. What is the most followed hashtag on LinkedIn? Yalla, one minute. The biggest hashtag on LinkedIn is, I'm gonna give you a hint. It is a country, a name of a country. Nope, not USA. Not USA. Ukraine. Nope. Russia? Nope. Chat, chat, <laughs> write it in the chat. Anyone? It's in Asia, not China, not Japan. India, yes. Check, check. He's, he won twice or she won twice. It's India. India is the number one hashtag on LinkedIn. Okay, so now before we contact or search for any leads on LinkedIn, our profile has to look pretty. We should give a really good first impression. So when we contact them, they're gonna research us, they're gonna visit our profile and they're gonna think, is it worth that I accept their connection request or I reply to their message? So that's why we talked about the headline, the photo, the, the URL and the about section. And now uh, there are four types of LinkedIn users. You cannot treat them all the same way. And you will know what type of, from now on, after this uh, presentation, you should know each profile belongs to which section. So the first one is, the publisher. So the publisher is the person who publish uh, and write content on an almost daily basis, okay? So let's say weekly, weekly base. So how do we know if this is a publisher a profile or a publisher user or not? Number one, their profile is perfect from top to bottom, everything. The banner, the photo is really good. The headline is customized. The about section is written well. Number two, when we go to their activity section, I'm gonna show you. So when we visit their activity section, here is Kat. We go to her activity section. And we go to all activities and we go to post. So when we go to post, she posted two days ago. Here, three days ago. And here, four days ago. So Kat, publish content almost daily base. So she is a publisher, okay? She is a publisher. Okay, so, and the bad news is that the publisher, they're only 1% of all LinkedIn users. So they are very rare that you see someone who publishes on a daily base. So those people are the easiest to contact. If I see a publisher and they publish on a daily basis, so they know the game and the rules of the game, all I have to do is number one, have my uh, ducks in a row when it comes to my profile, should be done 
optimize and number one number two when i contact them i have to do it through a system i cannot do cold connection request this is not going to help me so what i need to do is number one because they are publishers so i need to go to their activity find out when do they publish usually publishers publish at the same time so find out when do they publish number one what topics do they talk about or publish about number two then i need to start engaging with their post so each time they're posting i leave a really insightful comment not a couple of words it has to be more than five and seven words so i need to really research my comment and engage with them in a conversation on their post so i visit their profile check their activity section know what time they post what type of con uh, the content they talk about i do a little bit of research i engage with them this is the first comment a day or two another comment so once i do multiple comments i am on the radar now they recognize me oh this khalid guy he is commenting with me this is not the first time i remember that username i remember that profile let me visit their profile let me check them out and then after two three comments i send them a connection request with a note never ever send a connection request without a note we're going to talk about the template of the note okay so we go to the second type of use linkedin users which are the engagers those people have a really good uh, profile and they engage so when we go to their activity section you will see that they are not posting they post once or twice a month maybe or three times but they engage on a daily basis so they will see we will see engagements more than so we'll go here and if we go to richard richard is one of the top people on linkedin i love his content so we go to his activity although he's a publisher but he does also engage so you'll see the engagement he commented uh nine hours ago and here he replied so he is a huge engager commented again commented so when we see the engager person we need to know who do they engage with do they engage with other thought leaders or only their employees uh, their uh, company do they engage social content hi thank you bye or they have really long comment what type of uh, topics uh, are of their interest so we need to know all these things because when we reach out to them uh, we can bring out that I really enjoyed the comment you left on this profile where you talked about one, two, three, and then this, this could be part of the uh, connection request note that I sent to them. Okay, number three. Number three are the stalkers. The stalkers are the people who read a lot. They consume a lot of content but they're not really friendly with the keyboard. So they never touch the keyboard. They don't like to comment or write or do anything. When you go to their activities, you can barely see anything there in terms of engagement or in, in terms of post. So, but it is really important to know this fact. All your sales, all your leads, are from your stalker category. They're not from the engager and they're not from the publishers. People who buy from you are the silent readers. So, uh, so I use their profile to research them, try to find out their email, if they're active on other platform. And I do send them 
uh, uh, connection request with uh, with the note. The note always, I never try to pitch anyone or to ask anyone for help or to sell anything for anyone in the note. Never do that. And the last part, which is 60% of LinkedIn users are skeleton. Those people who register to LinkedIn, but they forgot that they have an account. They sign in maybe once or twice a year. Their account has no banner, no photo, nothing. So those people are hopeless case. I use their profile only to research them and find out three things. Uh, if I can find their email or if they're active on other social networks and who do we have in common, that's all. And then I reach out to them outside LinkedIn. Okay, so this is the template of the connection request note, greetings. Then I give them a praise, a compliment. Then I either continue the conversation I had with them on one of their posts. So I wrote a comment, they replied to me, then I can bring that here, or I use one of those four things in common. We either uh, we are either in the same city or the same field of work or the same LinkedIn group, or we have people in common. I never try to sell them anything. If I go to their profile, at the bottom of their profile, they follow influencers. I can mention one of the quotes from one of their influencers if I want to. And at the end, I thank them. So here it is. Hello, greetings, hello, Ahmed. Compliment, impressive profile. Things in common. I see that we are both members of Jordan Tech Group. We have Manal and Ayman, friends in common. I have worked with them and... They were a great asset to our company. No sales. I would like to connect with you to learn more as you are inspiration to me. Quote, anything you can imagine you can create by Oprah. At the end, thank you. Okay. So this is the template of a good connection request note. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about content creation then we're going to jump into a little bit of growth tips growth hacks on how to find people the best way to find people so a little bit of content so if i see this one here if i see this if i see this post from dicky dicky he's really huge so writing is truly the foundation of any kind of growth for me it led to clear thinking blah 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 so if I look at look at it here from from now on this is I learned this tip from Dickie and Justin they say you should be like the matrix when you see something you should see the matrix behind it so the matrix behind this post is this activity is truly the foundation of any kind of growth for me it's led to outcome 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 and I've only been doing this for a number of years. This is the matrix. This is the template of this post. So I want you from now on, when you see a successful post, and I'm going to show you how to find successful posts. If you see a successful post, try to templatize it. Templatize it. So this equals this. This equals this. So you can, so they say, don't steal content. Sometimes people steal this and they remove his name. No, steal the template of a successful content. So I steal this and I put my own stuff here that matches my interest, my experience, and I post it. You guys are quiet. So... Show me the level of your energy in the chat. If it, if you are, if your energy is high, write down ten. If it's really low, write down one. If halfway, write down five. Let me see. Let me see those numbers. Fifteen. Yes. Ten. Ten. Eight. Check. Check. I'll take eight. Thank you. That's it. Everybody else is asleep. 
Ten Mervat. I should have asked you to open your cameras to just to make sure you guys are present. Okay, okay. Ashraf, good. Thank you very much. Let's continue. So I want you to templatize, sorry if I'm speaking, saying the right way, the next post. So this post here, a lot of people want to know, want to be known as a writer. Very few want to sit at a table by themselves and write, and write, and write, and write, and write. Stop chasing recognition and become a writer the moment you hit publish. Yes, we have a question, uh, Natasha. Will we be able to uh, share the presentation and the recordings? So this is up to Natasha. Yes, Natasha. yes. Uh, I'm going to be sharing the recording. I, I'm going to put a form in the chat so that you can add your email address. It's a very short form. And I'm going to be sh uh, share this with you. And I'm also going to let you know uh, of um, other guest speakers. So, um, you know, this is part of my cohort. The other sessions are closed. This is only for the participants. Uh, but the public session, the guest speakers, I open them uh, to the public so that we can spread the knowledge. So I am going to put the link to the form here and I can, I'll send you everything, the link. And I'm also going to put this on my YouTube channel as well. Because, yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of great info here and I'm taking notes and uh, we definitely need to, we need to record this for sure and Nat share, it, share the knowledge, of course. Natasha, put your LinkedIn link here so people can connect with you and follow you also. Yes. Yeah, I did that. I'll put it again and I'm also going to share the form with you now. Okay, great. So I know this is going to be a tough one, so I'm not going to uh, be a tough teacher. So this is the answer for the question. This is the template for what we just saw. A lot of people want to be known as a job title. Very few want to do this by themselves and type of work and type of work. Stop chasing false thing. You become job title the moment you do this. So this is, see how we took this and we made it this. Okay, so enough about writing. Now, on the post, remember when we spoke about the uh, hook? So on the post, the structure of a post is the hook, then context, then the body, then call to action. And the only thing that shows are two things, the hook and the context. So, and then after that, you will see Seymour. So we have the hook, context, Seymour, body, and call to action. So you, the task of the hook should be to stop scrollers from scrolling. So if I have a sentence, I need to really think hard. How can I make this sentence a hook where whoever is scrolling need to stop and look at it and read it again and go to the second sentence, which is the context and be incentivized to click see more. Okay. So easy way to start making LinkedIn content. So, okay, this is good. I need, okay, I need to stop. Let me see that easy way. And then for one month, create content primarily for LinkedIn, share it with Seymour. Then I click on Seymour, make it. Now, the body has to be really valuable. When I promise people something, um, they're hooked and they click on Seymour, then I have to really deliver high value content. Because if I, if I always give them hook and there's no real value, 
they will never believe me again. So hook, then high value, and at the end, I give them call to action. Could be I have a, a hashtag, for example, learn with Khaled. So I say, to learn more about LinkedIn and stay with me, follow this hashtag, which is learn with Khaled. So every tip about LinkedIn that I post, I associate it with hashtag learn with Khaled. Or if I have a product, a digital product, uh, if I have a course, if you want to know more about tips like these, register to my upcoming cohort, for example. That's the call to action. So I hook people, I stop them from scrolling, then I make them click see more, then I give them huge value in the body, and then at the end, if you found this interesting, register to my upcoming course. All right. One of the tools that is really, really valuable is called Shield App. Shield App gives you analytics for your profile. You will have analytics for your company page, but LinkedIn does not have analytics for your personal profile. That's why Shield App, they are a huge company. I mean, really, really, really nice company, nice CEO. He has a very nice uh, profile on LinkedIn. They have a really nice blog tips and tricks about LinkedIn as well. And you can trace all your posts since you registered on LinkedIn. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, on this right here on Shield app, what I do is you can create uh, a label. So I can create a label. I can say show 50 posts, the last 50 posts, for example. And then I create labels from one till 24 from one and this is about the time and then i go here so this is 324 i round this time to three uh 12 around this to 12 16 around this to 16 13 around this to 13 so i label each post uh, uh, with a time label and then i put all the content uh, for the one o'clock, all the content for the four o'clock, all the content. So it will show me the collective uh, impressions for the collection of content of posts for each hour. And from that, I'll say, okay, so for the past 50 posts, my most uh, impressions came at 4 p.m. And you can do this every month for a number of posts. And then you can find out that your peak hour is at this time. So this is really technical way and correct way to find out what is the best time to post on LinkedIn. But in Hesbet Arab, we say it. <laughs> The best time is between 8 o'clock in the morning and 12 p.m. Okay. Next. Uh, can I go back, Khaled? I noticed here it says earned media value. What is that? $134. Ah, uh, they, they measure the cost per uh, impression. So uh, impression, which is uh, the views almost. So they... they they, they, they say if we put, uh, I think, 80 or I don't know what's the price to put it, uh, per impression. So they say if we have a price for co CPM, cost per impression, uh, cost per impression means uh, the impression is 1,000 views. So each 1,000 views, this is called cost per impression. So if we put 80 cents, I think, or 8 cents, I'm not sure which one a price on that and then we calculate your impressions right here so from this time i'm uh, here i'm doing uh, a one month a 30 days uh, views so collective of all impressions within 30 days you made this amount as of 
organically organically i have this uh, number of uh, impressions and if i want to do uh, ads it would have cost me this much ah, to get this I yes see. Okay. okay thank you hello so uh, where do we find content uh, two places linkedin and twitter twitter is really good muad he has a question go ahead muad Uh, Maad has to go. Thanks, thanks, Maad. Please make sure to fill the form so that we can stay in touch. Thank you, Maad. Okay. So uh, one of the places is Twitter. Uh, Twitter, we have two tools. We're going to talk about them. One of them is uh, uh, blackmagic.co.so. It's a really a cool tool and can uh, help you put people who engage with you in one place. And you can favorite people who you like to follow in another location. And it will show live if they have a new tweet. It will have a number one or two or three like this, I think. Yes. So when you have the favorite people, uh, if they have a new tweet, it will show immediately that they just tweeted. Then you can go there and engage with them. And there are more stuff uh, with this tool, it's a really good tool. Uh, so this is one of them. The second one is really important, which is called Twimix. Twimix, it's a Chrome extension. And the really good thing about Twimix is when you visit anybody's Twitter account, I visited Maher's Twitter account, it shows you historically the most successful tweets from this account. So if I visit uh, Natasha's uh, Twitter account, it will show me uh, that uh, the most successful tweets that got really high, the highest engagement here from Twimix. So Twimix is really good. So I can go to one of the top copywriters on Twitter and like Dickie Bush, and Justin Wilsh and uh, Sahil and so on. And when I see Twimix, it will show me their best performing tweets. And I can take that tweet and I can templatize it and use it again on LinkedIn and so on. And uh, is it is this a free extension? Free. It's oh, a free okay. extension. Okay. Yes. Now we have a tool called Hype Fury. I love Hype Fury. It's a... Uh, it's a really smart AI scheduling tool that works on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, it has three uh, type of pricing. The highest one, which is $50, I think, that includes LinkedIn. So what does it do? It's mainly on Twitter, but it branches out to Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, it helps you to create Twitter threads in a really nice way, number one. Number two, uh, it will, uh, you, you can have like a pitch tweet. So the pitch tweet, this is my course, register uh, at my upcoming cohort at this link. This is your pitch. So you save this with this tool and you know your average engagement on Twitter. So let's say your average, the highest you got in the past 60, 30, 60 days, is 10 retweets. This is your average, but then this is the highest. So what you say, if I get 15 retweets, send in the sales pitch. So you send the Twitter and you let it go via this tool. So you, you tweet it or you schedule it via this tool. And if you get high engagement, which is 15 that you put as a scale, it will send in the sales pitch tweet which is good this is very smart another one is if it has uh, you can see if i have 20 comments on my tweet retweet this tweet because it was very engaging retweet it after 12 hours or 24 hours so revive it again after a certain period of time in the same day almost so these are two smart things a third one is also, you can say, 
have a screenshot of my tweet and send it to my Instagram as a post. So it does that also. And you can do the same thing. If this tweet is successful with these KPIs, go ahead and send it to my LinkedIn. And it also shows you evergreen tweets, searches in your Twitter history, shows you one of the tweets. You can, you can, you can mark or label tweets that those are evergreen, which means they can be reused again and so on. So High Fuel is one of the smartest scheduling tools. I'm going to show you a trick how to find leads because this is where we're here for. We need to find leads. So we come here and we go to the search from the computer, we click on post, and then we go to filters. Let's do this. So we click here, we come to uh, LinkedIn, we click on search, we don't put any keywords. So I clicked on search, I click enter. So now I have a result page, and then I click on posts. And here you go. These are the posts. Then I go to filters, all filters. And then I say, I want the results to be from employees at this or these companies. I could go with the a sector, industry, or I could go with companies. So let's say I would like to target uh, active LinkedIn users in banks. So I'll say, okay, where is the Arab bank? Here's the Arab bank, which is some of the banks here in Jordan. Okay, I need another bank. Give me housing bank. Here's the housing bank. I need another bank. Give me Etihad bank. Here's Bank Etihad. So what am I doing here? I'm searching for posts from employees who work at these three banks. Show results. And now I have leads ready for me to engage them like we talked about. So I see this guy who posted this six days ago. And this guy six days ago. And this guy and all, three days ago. And all of them work at these three banks, okay? So what I can do, find out who is active. This is one day ago. And I can then engage with their post. Hello from the most talented team, Reflect Marketing Creative Team, the team that I'm proud to be a part of. I can just go here and say, looking good, everybody, nice photo, blah, blah, blah. This is the first contact with this person. I can go again and again and again, and then send them a, a connection request. So you see, this is one way to find leads for free from any sector or any companies you want. This is the first tip. Second tip. We're almost done, guys. This is a Google search hack. Google search hack. So I come here and I say, I am looking inside linkedin.com for anyone with the CTO title and who is also an Amman. So I click on this and it's gonna show me Rami Ma'a, CTO, Cairo Amman Bank. Ahmed Balbisi, Cairo Amman Bank. Ibrahim Abu Rajab, co-founder and CTO, Vivai. So I can find also users on LinkedIn via uh, search terms on Google. What else? I can also say, I'm looking for someone who has their mobile number on their LinkedIn profile, and they have a title as a founder and from Dubai. So I click here. Of course, you can change all that and do it as you like. So here's May Assam. She has her uh, mobile right here. This is the same thing here, here, and Jai, Mustafa, and so on. What else? I can look for recruiter. So I am looking for a recruiter who has their email on their LinkedIn profile, and they're from Doha or interested in Doha. Come here, put this code, 
and I find these people who are recruiters in Doha. So if I'm looking for a job in Doha, I can use this right here. Last one, I can find CEOs from Riyadh who have their email on their LinkedIn profile. And here you go, CEOs. So all these Google hacks uh, that you can search for LinkedIn users according to whatever information you're looking for. My last tip for today is when you are at an event, a uh, conference, a uh, workshop, and presence face-to-face, -face, what you can do is you can open your mobile, go to the search bar, and click on the QR code. And you have two options, scan code or show code. You can show your code, and you can ask people to scan your code on LinkedIn. And this means they will send you a connection request and you can accept immediately while you are together. So instead of exchanging a business card, you can do this instantly. And after you're done with this and accept it while you guys are together, you can take a photo, a selfie together, share it and tag them. This is one of the best ways to network with people using LinkedIn. So we come to the end. I want you to please rate my session from one to five. One is really bad, five is really good. And after you do that in the chat section, you can follow me on my social media at the username Shusmo. Thank you very much, Natasha, for you and your kind uh, people. I hope so. Thank you very much, Khaled. This has been amazing. I've been taking note and I like I started installing Shield while you're talking and Black Magic. Like I'm going crazy. There's a lot, a lot of info. So I know we're a bit over the hour, so I understand if anyone has to leave. But since Khaled is here, if we can just open it up for questions, I'd like to start with the participants in the course. We have Isabella. Uh, Isabella, uh, I would like to uh, give you the floor as the first person to ask, uh, since you're the participant of the course. Um, please un un unmute uh, your uh, microphone um, and let us know if you have any questions or any comments. Hi, Isabella. Let me she's unmuting. Ask to unmute. Uh, hold on. Uh, Isabella, can you hear us? Sorry. Ah, okay. All right. So I have, um, first of all, thank you so much for all of this information. It's been very um, helpful. I would like to know if there are any benefits to putting in any extra work um, and time for posting more regularly on LinkedIn to um, help get um, my writing discovered. I didn't understand the, the question. I think my English is really bad. No, I no. can speak it. But... <laughs> I didn't understand it either. So like if, if okay. you, maybe I think you were breaking up a bit. So if you can repeat the question, Isabella. Sure. So um, as a freelance writer, I'm, I'm asking why should I post regularly or is there any reason for me to mm -hmm. post regularly on LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Thank you. So uh, uh, the, the, uh, the old perception that I need to just upload my information and people will contact me is in the past. So now to, uh, to create a personal brand for me, I need to have a really optimized, number one, really optimized profile. So when people visit me, they will get a really good first impression of me. And two, how can I showcase my skills and expertise uh, if I don't write about it. So people will not know my superpowers unless I'm writing about it, I'm showcasing. And it's not about flexing my muscles. It's about educating people, inspiring people, helping people. And when I do this, I am, uh, I'm showcasing my values and uh, 
experience that I learned. So writing will help you, uh, will help you, uh, number one, network with people who, who might be interested in what you are offering. And number two, it will show uh, your superpowers to people. So this is uh, optimization for profile optimization, then copywriting on LinkedIn. And there's a third one also. You also have to go and engage with people uh, post. So in, investing in comments, in spice, insightful comments at uh, two type of people, uh, decision makers uh, and thought leaders. Uh, so uh, if I go, let's say I have uh, my a group of people who are interested in what I write. Okay. But if I go to Natasha and I engage with her content, when she writes, I leave insightful comments one time, two times, three times, four times. Her people will get to see my type of content. They will say, okay, who's this guy? What is he talking about? This sounds interesting. This is useful. Let me go check him out. Let me go visit his profile. So I'll start utilizing her followers who might be in need of my services as well. So it's like I am showcasing myself or advertising my, my skills at her profile as well. So three things, private, uh, profile optimization, copywriting and engaging with decision makers and thought leaders. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, um, Isabella, before we open it up? to um, the, the guests. Okay, so uh, it's up to your time, uh, Khaled, if, if you can stay longer. I know your, your time is very valuable, but so we can, uh, maybe we'll accept two more questions. Uh, so anyone who has any question, uh, please go ahead and ask it. I don't think they have questions. My peeps don't have questions. <laughs> if if nobody has any question, I will go. Ah, okay. So we have one. Firas, please go ahead. Firas. Ali. Or Ali. Firas. Ali Hajjaj. Who has the? I think that's Firas. Ali. Ali. Ah, Ali. I see Ali and Firas. Okay, let's start with Ali and then Firas. Ali. Hello, Khaled. Hello, all. Thank you very much for this uh, session. It was really useful. Um, I wanted to ask about. Um, the popularity of LinkedIn, is it uh, increasing? Is it decreasing? Mm. For me, I'm, uh, uh, I wish everybody sees your uh, session because I'm uh, a little bit upset about the content that people are posting on LinkedIn. Instead of sharing knowledge, they just share uh, some, uh, like congratulate me, I just take, took this course, <laughs> or I met this person or things like that that are not really beneficial for me as a user. I think the purpose of LinkedIn is to share your knowledge and that's how you should uh, benefit others and maybe in return you get some uh, results and connections. So is this affecting the popularity of LinkedIn? Do you think uh, if what uh, LinkedIn is happy is uh, going towards other social media networks like Facebook, for example? Is it losing users or is okay. it gaining? Good users? question. Uh, let me tell you, um, it, it is not about, uh, LinkedIn is not popular. Uh, which is good. I don't want it to be popular. I don't want it to attract more people. I'm happy with LinkedIn the way it is. Uh, 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 Gary Gary Vaynerchuk, he said LinkedIn uh, uh, 2020 is Facebook 2012, which, which means that the algorithm of LinkedIn is really easy on the people and the organic reach is much better than Facebook. What happened in the past two years, I've, I've followed people in the past two years and I saw people becoming millionaires uh, abroad with, with the right market, uh, not in Jordan, but with the USA, with the other markets. Uh, they have uh, really made good money on LinkedIn. Uh, so, uh, and not only that, there is a migration from Twitter to LinkedIn. So people started like most of the startup founders and the copyright people and the thought leaders are starting on Twitter because Twitter is the right platform for them. But now we see a migration from Twitter to LinkedIn. Everybody's there. Uh, like a lot of people who made it on LinkedIn say, hey guys, 
need to come to uh, LinkedIn because, uh, because Facebook, the type of people on Facebook are your family and friends. Uh, uh, Instagram are the lifestyle people, uh, health, fashion, and so on. Twitter are the this are the thought uh, the thought leaders. So if I want to search for something in specific, something really valuable, it is best to search for it on Twitter than Google because I will find companies and accounts who really talk or share articles, valuable and fresh articles about this topic. So thought leaders reside on Twitter. Now, on LinkedIn, we have two types of people. They call them the decision makers. So when I'm speaking with someone, uh, I'm, I, can, I can find CTOs uh, in the banking sector in Jordan or in Saudi. I can do this easily for free. And you cannot do this on any other platform. So the value on LinkedIn is massive. But answering your question, is it popular? Is it going to gain pop popularity? I don't think so. But there is value in it. The ROI is really high in it. And there are very few people who reach to this conclusion and they are making really big money. Uh, and um, from my own experience, I'm telling you, the ROI on selling my uh, digital products on LinkedIn is the highest than any other platform. Yes, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, last question is for Firas. Uh, Firas, you had a question? Firas Al Kawasmi. Uh, Firas, he doesn't have his uh, mic. His, okay. uh, so All right. He... So we'll open it to one more. Uh, I see somebody here who just joined us, Jim. Um, but any anyone who has any question, please, this is your last chance at last chance. Just uh, OK, then if there's nobody wants to ask. Um, um, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I just joined in because I literally just saw the tweet. Would okay. I be recording like that we can listen to later? Yes, yes. I'm going to be sharing uh, the recording uh, and I'm also going to put it on my YouTube channel. Uh, Jim, I'm going to post uh, here a, a, a Google form. If you can just fill it, you just, it will take one minute. It's just your name and email address. So I can uh, send this to you and also make sure uh, that I let you know of future events. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Of course. All right. So if we don't have okay, the last question is going to be for me because I have the privileges of being the host. <laughs> All right. So Khaled, I am. Uh, okay. Yeah, I have one here. Mako. Uh, Mako. Mako. Um, okay. Then fine. I'll ask one question and then quickly. But uh, Khaled, I'm curious about the stalkers. You said that the stalkers are the ones who actually buy your products. And how do you know that they are stalkers? I did not quite. Because or we call them the all silent major or the silent major or the people who are silent. They just watch, and I noticed that honestly, sometimes suddenly someone pops up out of nowhere, and they say, "I've been following your stuff, and I would love to work with you." And but how do you find the stalkers? I don't find them. They find me. So all my leads and people who buy from me. I always ask them, how did you find about me? Is it referral or is it one of my posts? 90% are there my posts. So, okay. And then uh, when I, look, I go to their profile, we don't have any conversation and we're not following. They're following me, but I'm not following them. So, so most, they never, they never engage with me. So all the people who purchase my services are people who are stalkers. They, um, I don't want to call them stalkers. I was just kidding. They're, they're silent readers. So the they- The silent majority, or we call yeah. them. So the silent, which is interesting. So you, why do you think that the people who are actually your biggest fans or the ones who are actually willing to invest in, in your products or services are the quiet ones, while the ones who retweet and like, and they, they're not willing to do that. It's, isn't that interesting? It is, but because we remember the percentage of each, 
the publishers are 1%, the engagers are 9%, and then the silent majority are 30%. Mm -hmm. So it is because of that. So people who, who are engaging, they, they, feel, they feel they're happy, they got their uh, uh, dopamine from my post, so they, they paid back by engaging. So. I see, interesting. Okay. Uh, there is one. Uh, how can we manage not to? Uh, OH from Uday Hawatme. What's your advice for starting a LinkedIn community and maybe developing that into a personal business later on, side by side with our daily job? How can we manage not to let one affect the other? Yeah, I had a digital community for the past year and. Uh, uh, what I how I did it in the beginning uh, for the whole year that we have a weekly meeting via Zoom. But then now I change it that we have a Q and A one week, and then a one lecture per week. So I change it from four lectures to one lecture per week to make it easy on me. It is not easy to be honest with you. Uh, but because uh, the more you give this community uh, and the more you see back from them. So they are either paying you monthly subscription or they're buying your product, but you have to treat them like a VIP and give them also uh, the goodie stuff before you go public and so on. So uh, digital communities are something hot in the past, uh, the past two years. Mm. And I, I jumped on it. And now I see it a little bit slowed down. It's not as popular as it used to be. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I know you have to go. But there's... Okay, this is the last one. I promise. Dr. Khaled, would you make a video or live on how we benefit from the stalkers? <laughs> no, I'm, I, 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 I don't know how to benefit from them. I, all I all I do is I give high value free content. That's what I do. So this here, high value free content, create uh, awareness, high awareness, and attracts people. And then this is the top of the funnel. Then at the bottom of the funnel, I have my uh, digital products. By the way, I have a course. By the way, uh, I have a meeting. By the way, I have a newsletter. So always give high value, which is the top of the funnel, and at the end, sell your digital product. Hmm. Okay, so we are done. Thank you very much, Khaled. Uh, I don't know why, why my- Let's take a photo. Can we, can we yeah, open can, it up? Yeah, can we all take a photo? My image is frozen for some reason, but let's all take a gallery, gallery view. Uh, Maku has a question, but he didn't get to ask, ask his question. Okay, if it's up to you. Uh... Yeah, go ahead, Maku, go ahead. Assalamu how are you, Mr. Khaled? Thank Assalamu you. Assalamu alaikum, how are you doing? Uh, chance. Uh, actually, I joined you uh, from uh, five minutes only, so I, uh, I will uh, see the record, inshallah. Uh, I have two questions, uh, but I will, uh, if you have time, you can answer me, please. Uh, how to stay up to date with algorithm uh, for LinkedIn? This is my first question. And uh, in, I can tell you also, uh, what is the best source for uh, this one? To be up to date with algorithm, uh, best source. Because I see on the uh, web, uh, a lot of things are different, not the same. Uh, my second qu question is, uh, what's the best practices for LinkedIn algorithm nowadays? And thank you. Okay. Uh, could, I, I want you to, if you can, do you have my account on LinkedIn? Could you send me the questions and typing? Yes, I'm, and writing? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm following you. Uh, okay. Could you could you send me the questions in, in, uh, in writing? And I will, because Melba okay. said good questions, I will answer them, inshallah, in a post. So send me the questions, I will answer them in the post, inshallah. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you. Okay, photos. Anyone who wants to open the camera, take, camera, take a photo? Your, yeah, turn on your video camera and let's take a, a picture, everyone. <laughs> if you can, if you can turn on your video camera, um, if you can. Uh, I changed the view to gallery. Yeah, I see it. Okay, I see, I see it's nice to see your beautiful faces. Mak uh, Maku, 
uh, it's nice to see everyone's face. يلا علي. علي where is your camera? Come on, Uday, Mahmoud. I'm sure I'm sure you look fine. Yeah, I'm sorry, maybe your mistake. I'm sorry, maybe you're mistaken. I I decide. Not I wonder if I could. <laughs> okay, I okay. think this is good enough. All right, let's just I don't know maybe thumbs up or something or. Yalla. Thumbs up. Thank you so much, Khaled. This was amazing. We're so lucky Thank to you. have you. And uh, please, everyone, stay in touch. Uh, we'll let you know of a future course. And I said, um, you know, this is a special occasion. The other sessions are closed for participants. Every once in a while, I open one, and I thought Khaled has amazing knowledge. So let's open it up to the <laughs> to the world so uh thank you very much everyone and uh, let's stay in touch thank you khaled really appreciate it and i will post this on my youtube channel and i also send it to you via email please thank make you. fill the form that i sent i'm just gonna put it one more time in the chat fill the form and we will stay in touch thank you take care bye-bye